Today we are going to take an in-depth look into SQL List Manager. Uh, we are going to we, go, we are going to replicate three lists from SharePoint into a SQL Server database, and then we are going to compare and see what kind of columns are generated in SQL Server uh, from the SharePoint list columns. So the three lists that we are going to use for today's demo is products, which contains the list of all the products, and if we have a look at the list settings we can see that they are we have different types of columns created in this list uh, this will help us to see how these columns are going to be transformed into SQL Server columns next we are going to uh, take invoices list now invoices list has uh, all the invoices details and each invoice is uh, each invoice consists of multiple products so and each invoice belongs to a customer so a customer is a lookup column and product IDs is also a lookup column but with allow multiple values check. So we're going to have a uh, look at how this column gets transformed in SQL Server as well. And there's one more list which is customers which contains the details of all the customers. All right, so let's jump into it. Uh, let's start off by creating a database in SQL Server. So we are going to give it a name and we are going to use this database for the replication later on. Now next step is to create the replication. First step is to give uh, SharePoint connection details. So we are going to set up our SharePoint connection. Now this is where all our lists exist and we are going to use our Microsoft credentials for authentication. All right, our connection works. Let's move on. Next step is to basically select the lists that we are going to use for this demo. And as we discussed, we are going to select the three lists, products, invoices, and customers. So we have our customers, we have invoices, and we have products. Okay. Next, now this is where we define our SQL connection. And we are going to use Windows authentication. Let's test it out. And finally, we are going to give our replication a name so that we can identify it. And since this is uh, checked, so this once we finish it, then the replication will be enabled automatically. And this in the replication of data will start off. So if we go back to our SQL Server database, so now when we look at our database, we can see that all the tables are created um, for our three invoices. Now, for instance, if we see we have customers for a customer list, invoices for invoices list, and products for products list. But since our invoices has a column for uh, a lookup column which has multiple values, so what it has done, it has uh, created another table which is called invoices product IDs. Now this will store the multiple values stored for each invoice. Now before we jump let's just have a look at all the different types of columns that has been created. So let's have a look at invoices and products. So let's run this query on this database and let's see how uh, columns of SharePoint has been transformed into SQL. So let me just drag it here so that we can look at the data. So here we can see the table name. So for example, for invoices, and we are at invoices right now. Let's uh, look at the list settings. And we are primarily more interested into the columns that are user created rather than system generated so let's have a look at so for title which is a single line of text is converted into an nvhr customer id which is a lookup has become an integer total amount number which has become a decimal id is integer which is um, which is a running id in the list and if we look at product ids we see that there's no product IDs mentioned here. Now why they are not mentioned here? So if we also include, so right now our invoices and invoices and 
uh, invoices and products tables data right let's let's add one more column uh, let's add uh, one more table which includes the invoices products and that is that is the table right here so let's just copy that move here and so now we see that in our invoices product IDs it has a parent invoices ID which contains the ID of the uh, of the invoice and we have child invoices uh, child product IDs which uh, which contains all the IDs for all the products that exist for that invoice so it has a one-to-many relationship between invoices and in uh, and invoices underscore product IDs similarly if we go into our products so this is our products list settings and if we look at the different columns that exist here and then compare them with the columns that has been generated via SQL in SQL Server so we can see that if, uh, the unit price which is uh, which is currency in SharePoint has been transformed into money which is correct uh, category metadata is a unique identifier again category ID which is a lookup here we are storing an ID for that current stock is decimal and calculated so the calculated price plus VAT is also converted into money so if we have a look at calculated price column we will see that the result has currency type so that's why it has transformed it into money here and similarly it has uh, it has more or less created similar columns in SQL Server all right so now let's have a look at the data that we get from SharePoint and how it is converted in uh, and how it is stored in a SQL Server table so what we're going to do here we are going to run a query which basically gets all the invoices and all the products associated to it along with which cust to which customer that invoice belongs to so if we have a look at our query here let me just uh, expand it for a while so if we look at our query here it is basically getting all the invoices and then we have three inner joints one for invoices product IDs to get all the invoice products then for the products to get the product title and then to customer to get the customer name all right so let's run this query and we have our result here so let's compare the data in sql server and in sharepoint list so if we go back to our invoices list here uh, let's see invoice number two so invoice number two has four products and uh, so we are getting four rows here it belongs to one customer so we are getting the customer right we are getting all the products correct and then the rest is just data that is coming out from that list so total amount and invoice title etc so as you can see it is it has very intelligently uh, created a sort of a relationship between invoice and invoice product IDs so that you can have a column which has multiple values and then you can easily store it and then later use it for your reporting purposes from your SQL Server data right now let's see how it is getting synchronized so let's create a new invoice here let's call it demo invoice let's select a dis different customer this time let's call it chart with uh, let's call it Mr. Albert White Mr. Albert White is going to place an order for balloons and bath fizzers. Right, so and let's uh, let's add bow as well. So we have uh, selected three products. Uh, let's give it an amount and let's save it. All right. Now since the service is running, it is going to synchronize the data into our SQL Server database. So if we go back to our SQL Server database and if I run this query then you can see at the bottom I'll have I have one more invoice demo invoice which you just created for Mr. Albert and which has three products that we selected along with the amount 
Now let's run another query to get all the data from both products and invoices and see how the data appears. So at the bottom we have our invoices and on top we have our products. So and if we compare it, so let's go back to our products list. And if we do a quick comparison of the data here along with that, we can see some similarities and we can see the data is more or less appearing in a similar manner. Of course, apart from apart from the lookup columns are stored in a separate table uh, created for each lookup column. So there you go guys. Uh, so today we have uh, seen how the data and specifically columns uh, in SharePoint list get transformed into SQL server table columns when uh, when we replicate the data using SQL list manager. And as you can see uh, the way it transforms the data and stores the data in SQL server is uh, going to be very helpful with your reporting needs. Thank you.